I finally finished all eight episodes of the Netflix One Piece live action and we have to talk about it. Where do I even begin? First thing we have to do is say a massive props to the showrunners, to Netflix, to everyone involved. Because whether you loved or hated the adaptation, we all have to acknowledge that they achieved a massive feat and have played a big part in spreading the gospel of One Piece to a whole new level. One Piece has now truly become a household name, trending number one globally, setting a new record that surpassed the day view of Stranger Things and Wednesday and at the time of this recording it has a 95% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and most of all some of my best friends friends whom I've never heard even mention anime let alone One Piece noticed the One Piece live action and it even triggered the memory of the four kids dub that they used to watch as children and so in that respect we have to say that the live action succeeded in what I think was the purpose and objective of the live action to spread the good news that is Echiro Oda's masterpiece to extend the reach of One Piece by portraying it in a medium that's more accessible to a wider audience. So say what you want about the live action, but we can't deny that this is a massive achievement, not just for the showrunners or everyone involved in its production and creation, but also us, the fans of One Piece. Because we did it guys. One Piece is trending number one globally. This series that we hold so dear to our hearts has well and truly broken into the mainstream all over the world. For many of us we've been able to experience the joy of some of our friends our family our partners finally experiencing our favorite series and i think that in and of itself is cause for huge celebration and praise but moving on and diving deep into the content itself and let me keep going on with the positives of the live action because i have to say that overall i found it a very enjoyable experience for me i found that it was definitely a very solid series i thought that the acting was of very high quality the set design Design and costuming was spectacular and generally despite the many changes that were made it elicited the same sort of core emotions and mood that I associate with One Piece. It was fun, it made me laugh, had a good amount of action but then balanced that with a lot of heart and most of all it captured the main themes and messages of the series. This idea of a grand adventure, chasing your dreams, the fundamental drive for freedom and in a lot of ways it exceeded expectations which is saying a lot because I was actually someone who was wasn't as apprehensive of this adaptation. I was someone genuinely looking forward to the whole thing and mostly only had good things to say about it from what I had seen so far in the teaser and trailer and so on. So for the show to exceed the wider fan base's expectations, but personally my expectations as well, I think that's saying something. Specifically, their use of CGI to portray the devil fruits, particularly Luffy's bendy body, is a major win. When I was watching the teaser or the trailer, I still felt like Luffy's gomu gomu scenes felt slightly off. The CGI didn't look quite right, but I found that it was much better in the series itself. In fact, I think that may be the best presentation of an elastic body in live action form that I've ever seen. Also, when it comes to the trailer and the teaser, it took me quite a while to get used to the dialogue and the fact that they were talking in English still felt a little bit cringe, but surprisingly, I barely noticed it at all when I was actually watching the series, and it didn't bother me. It wasn't even something that I necessarily had to get used to, although that being said, I did also try watching some of the series in Japanese dub with English sub and that was even greater. There were also many creative decisions and changes that were made from the original series, a lot of which I think made a lot of sense and I actually did enjoy. For starters, although for the most part the core of the heart and the soul and the spirit seems to stay pretty true to the original series, the tone of the live action feels much more darker and more mature in this adaptation. It's a lot more graphic and brutal, a lot more blood, actual death, and even a bit of romance. And I will admit that in some of these moments, I didn't actually like the change because I felt that this altered the characterization of certain figures and of certain moments. And I'll get to what I mean by that soon. But overall, I think this darker mood was a wise decision. As a live action, I think the series had a much harder line to balance when it comes to pleasing its target audience. We know that the original manga and that the anime to a similar extent is written for a younger audience. Readers of around 15 years old. Now whether that's true in practice or not, given how many people have grown up with the series and are now much beyond that age range, the fact is that it is the 15 year old boy that Oda has in mind when he's writing, which means that overall the series is often a lot brighter and for better or for worse, avoids things like character death. Which isn't to say that One Piece doesn't have dark themes or moments, because it certainly does, and in some cases quite blatantly too, but it's also quite 
quite clear that Oda really wants to maintain this brighter energy and that One Piece is full of wonder and joy and it isn't quite so bleak. That's why One Piece often feels like a haven that I can escape into. A world that's relatable but simultaneously divorced from reality. But when translating that series into a live action medium, a darker, grittier, more realistic world does seem necessary. Especially when we consider the new audience that maybe probably wouldn't gel as well with such a brighter atmosphere. Which is why I actually enjoyed those Syrup Village episodes. Yes, it could have been shorter so that we spent more time in other arcs such as Baratie or Arlong Park. Arlong Park especially could have done with more screen time, especially the fights in my opinion. But overall, I really enjoyed that horror theme and that genre of episodes 3 and 4. I think it's a shame that we didn't have wacky characters like Gaimon on Django, both of whom are really such pivotal characters that really established the goofy flavor of One Piece in those earlier days. But I understand why they were cut out. At the end of the day, the extent of the goofiness and the wackiness just simply wasn't the vibe that they were going for in this particular adaptation of the series. Same goes for some of the characters, Luffy being a great example. While at the heart, Inaki's Luffy feels very much like the goofy and pure-hearted, freedom-seeking adventure lover. He's also very different in how much more aware and conscious he is of everything around him. His dialogue is often peppered with lines that don't necessarily feel like comments that our original Luffy would make. But again, I think that this may have been the right choice for this series. Or else it would risk Luffy feeling like an unbelievable or maybe even an annoying character. Buggy was a character I think they did brilliantly. A great balance between being scary and yet still quite goofy. His introduction and his enslavement of the whole town was unexpected. But a very nice touch that emphasized his threat so that he's not just some sort of bumbling clown. I think in the original series, Buggy is an initially forgettable villain that gradually finds his way into the heart of fans who eventually recognize his godship as Buggy D. Clown. But in the live action, he's immediately compelling. Same as Helmeppo. You can definitely say that Netflix went for more mature, what with the nudity, and what a creative and ingenious way to bring in the idea of his butt chin. Speaking of mature, there was also a clearer hint of romance in the live action, which is new, Usopp getting an actual kiss for Star Starters. And who would have thought that out of these three, our boy Usopp is the one to get some action first. But even within the crew, there's a very flirtatious or romantic energy. I mean, I can't be the only one who thought that Zoro was also interested in Nami. And that's the reason why he's so very jealous and antagonistic towards Sanji. Which is very interesting because according to an interview with showrunner Steve Maeda, Oda told them that there is to be no romance between the crew members. Which has you wondering, is this something that they had initially planned on leaning into much more. Or maybe it's just the chemistry that we're seeing, given that these are real life humans interacting with one another. Either way, I think the extent of what we've seen of that romantic energy actually works in the context of the live action, because generally the wider audience is probably more used to seeing themes of romance, some sort of romantic elements, being at least some part of their entertainment. Although personally, I'm glad of it sticking to the amount that it has, and not something that we're going to witness explicitly, particularly between the crew, because I am no way ready for that sort of drama between the Straw Hats. On that note about romance though, I think the change to Sanji's character, making him more charismatic and flirty as opposed to straight up simp, was a very very wise decision given the audience this is catering, as well as the era that we live in. But with all of those positives, I wasn't a fan of all the changes that were made, nor do I think that the One Piece live action was flawless. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I don't think that the big iconic moments that we remember so fondly about the earlier days of the East Blue Saga left the same level of impact in the live action. In some cases, I think it might have been the placement of those scenes. For example, I think breaking up Luffy's flashback between the first and second episodes meant that Shanks' sacrifice didn't have the same level of gravitas. And in some cases, it might have been the acting or even the timing and pacing and when the cuts were being made. But overall, I just didn't feel quite as emotional watching those iconic scenes as I did when watching the anime or reading the manga for the first time. I will say that both Sanji's farewell and Nami's help me scenes in the live action got me teary, but I was straight up crying, bawling, 
when I first came across those moments. In fact, even when I go back to re-watch those scenes in the anime or re-read them in the manga, I still get teary. And the fact that I got as emotional as I did in Sanji's scene in the live action, I think that's really a testament to Taz's portrayal of Sanji and his acting. Because I think there are a lot of crucial moments from the Baratie arc that were cut out in the live action. Overall, I agree with them dealing with Krieg the way that they did and cutting that plot out. But the scenes of Sanji witnessing Luffy and Zoro's resolve and the conflict that he had with them as well as his inner turmoil about chasing your dreams to the extent of putting your own life on the line. Those were such pivotal moments that I think overall contributed to his final farewell and the overall level of emotional investment into Sanji's character that I don't think got fully fleshed out here. Some casting choices I think were questionable, Ben Beckman being the main and obvious one because no disrespect to the actor, but this just isn't Ben Beckman. Even Shanks, to the exception of that very final episode, Shanks in the live action just didn't do it for me. In the original series, Shanks just has this magnetic pull. We're just inexplicably drawn to him and I didn't feel that level of charisma in the live action. And an opinion that I think might be controversial, I wasn't blown away by Mihawk either. This version of Mihawk just didn't give me the sense of the strongest swordsman in the world. I didn't feel that level of presence. I don't know what it is, maybe it's because he looks quite young, could be something different, but it just didn't do it for me. Also, I know that people might be over the memes about Arlong's size since the trailer, but this is something that I really couldn't shake watching the live action. In terms of his acting and his overall vibe, I could in theory see the terror of Arlong, but when it came to his appearance, especially his size, I just didn't really feel that he was an actual threat. Again, that dominating presence just wasn't there. I was also quite disappointed about the overall lack and the absence of Usopp in this first season. I hope that we get more of him in later seasons should we get further seasons. Because the moments that we do get, I think they were well done. But as it stands, I'm left with this feeling that Usopp is very much a side character as opposed to an important member of the crew. Even in his own Sir Village arc, he didn't get that much of character development. There are also some other changes to characters where it's clear they're going in another direction to the original series and in this case it just didn't quite gel for me. The decision to make Zoro cool and really only cool. It's a choice that I do somewhat understand because in those action scenes, McKenyu really nails that badassness of Zoro and I think he becomes an easy favorite for new audiences. But I think this is a discredit to the original character and makes Zoro feel quite one-dimensional. It also meant that his big scenes didn't quite land emotionally. Personally, I'm also just a fan of Zoro's goofy side and I find that to be an important element of his character and it's something that I miss even from pre time skip days even in the original series and it's just such a missed opportunity when you see the actors behind the scenes or in their promotional material because McKenyu has this great playful side that I think would have translated very well into his portrayal of Zoro. Garp is another very curious case because on one hand I thought that the acting itself was brilliant and there were some moments that I did recognize that same Garp that we know from the original series but in a lot of ways I just don't quite quite understand what they were going for with Garp. To clarify, I do understand why his role was expanded on for this first season and in general I support that change. After all, that's just how TV works. We need to be switching between locations or between characters to keep up the dynamism and the tension in the series. But the motivation for Garp's actions, as well as the implications of what these changes will mean for the character going forward, those are what have me confused and maybe even worried. For example, how will his ultimate encounter encouragement of Luffy to follow his dreams and to become a pirate. How's that going to play out in terms of his own internal conflict that we witnessed during the Marineford War arc? Or is that me just looking way too far ahead in the future? It also messed up the characterization of Garp as the marine hero. A man who is supposedly past his prime but could still F up anyone he wants to. While also being a very fun and very carefree individual that makes him so charming and personally quite possibly my favorite character outside of the Straw Hats. And I get that this is a bit hypocritical of me because I did say that the changes to some other characters like Luffy, they were okay because that's simply the vibe and the character that they were going for in the live action. And so really the same could be said for Gar. But I just couldn't get behind this one. And I think this is actually very understandable because according to the same interview with Steve, it took a lot of convincing for Oda to say yes to Garp's role in this season. So I think it makes sense that this is something that felt very off 
itself because it is such a fundamental change that even Odell was very hesitant about. I felt the same way about Roger's death. While I said that overall I am for that darker, more brutal portrayal of One Piece, I wasn't a fan of Roger's execution. This is a scene that's supposed to be Roger's final triumph. A big F you to the world government where instead of instilling fear and order, Roger sets ablaze the golden age of piracy. In this moment, Roger becomes much more than a man. He's a figure larger than life. Not even death could scare him or keep him quiet. Whereas in this adaptation, I very much felt like this is Roger's death. And again, I just think that this is one of those changes that were unjustified or just doesn't have the right effect. Similar to how they dealt with Nami's character arc, overall, I really enjoyed Nami's character, especially how they made her much more badass and an active participant in a lot of the action and the conflict. Although I do wonder how this is going to play out in the future when she becomes a member of the Cowardly Trio. But just with some of the other decisions, I was left quite confused. For example, it was much more obvious or really, it was explicit that she was betraying the crew, but also that this betrayal was for underlying, understandable, empathetic reasons, as well as keeping the whole town clueless about her sacrifice. That was just a decision that I really didn't see the point of. Because overall, I think this brought down the level of complexity or the intrigue, which I think is a core part of what makes One Piece so great. One Piece is a very layered and complex series. And just generally, I do feel that the live action brought that down a bit. It made everything feel less nuanced or less clever and everything just felt a little bit more right up in your face. Even less intriguing in some respects. In fact, that's something that I really felt after the very first episode. While I could say that personally, I very much enjoyed that first episode, I did get the sense that this is something more suited for actual fans as opposed to complete newcomers because I didn't quite feel that compelling charm or intrigue to hook new audiences with just that one episode. So. But maybe that's just me because I did show the live action to some of my non-weeb friends. They had zero context, zero experience with One Piece, some of them zero exposure to anime in general. And they all really enjoyed the first episode and saw the appeal immediately. And by the way, if you want to watch more of their thoughts, then check this video out. I've gone away from this whole experience with the idea that constantly comparing the live action adaptation to the original series just isn't appropriate. Yes, I do think that to some extent, having certain expectations and therefore making some comparisons and critiques where the live action just fundamentally misses the mark or the point about certain characters or moments is valid but overall the live action has to be appreciated for what it is which is ultimately an adaptation and not just a straight up one-to-one -one retelling of the series in simply a new format and if that is enough to appeal to new watchers then it's done its job the fact that it has for all our critiques and reservations still overwhelmingly satisfied One Piece lovers, which has been generally the response that I've seen so far, then it's a massive, massive success. Plus, we have to appreciate the little nods and easter eggs that they included for us veterans, the way that they really stressed that idea about what separates a captain from his crew with Usopp present. That felt like a pretty clear foreshadowing of the conflict that's to come between Luffy and Usopp. Even Luffy mistaking the Going Merry to have talked to him, the many figures that we could recognize at Goldie Rogers execution and on that note the potential nod to the Crocomon theory because we do know that the showrunners are very much invested One Piece fans but also actually a part of the One Piece community. Matt Owens for example has participated in multiple reveries which for those of you who don't know is the One Piece YouTuber summit and so potentially including a tease of what is now a quite widely known theory. I don't think that's out of the question and honestly it felt like a gift for the fan base and this is something that that I have to say I really enjoyed about getting to watch the live action. It was experiencing the story again from the beginning with the wealth of information that I do have. Watching Luffy eat the devil fruit, him being drawn to it, or even the comments that Shanks made about its value. There was just so much more weight behind these scenes and it really changed my perspective on these moments and my appreciation for those scenes. And it was just such an interesting and satisfying experience. And I don't know if satisfying is 
quite the right word. But you're just gonna have to give me a break here. And I know that there is still so much more to say. But I think this is a good way to say, all in all, I love the One Piece live action. I would personally give it an 8 out of 10. I'm genuinely excited for the second season. And I do hope that we do get a second season. And honestly, I'm just very grateful that this is an actual thing. The fact that this live action exists, it's something that I got to experience, got to show my friends, the fact that it's bringing in new audiences, all of it. It's just something that I really, really appreciate. And as always, thanks for listening to me ramble. Let me know what you thought of the One Piece live action by leaving a comment below. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you to all of our channel and Patreon members. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.